May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know that He is the hope that belongs to our call. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was passing through a field of grain on the Sabbath, his disciples began to make a path while picking the heads of the grain. At this, the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and he and his companions were hungry? How he went into the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of offering that only the priests could lawfully eat and shared it with his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That is why... The Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Today's Gospel presents to us another confrontation between Jesus and the Pharisees. We have here another argumentative conflict between Jesus and the Pharisees on the issue of the law and the role of law in the lives of the people. The Pharisees accused the disciples of our Lord for violating the Sabbath law. It was forbidden that on the day of Sabbath anyone should work. And here they go, the disciples of the Lord, picking grains of, of corn on the path, on their way, that took notice, that the, that the Pharisees took notice of because it was really forbidden. So what did they say? Have you, look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? And then here the Lord answered them. First, by citing what happened in the Old Testament. In the Hebrew Testament, it was recounted that David allowed it. David did that he entered the, the forbidden place, meaning the place that is restricted only for the priest, but he entered there and his companions in order to get some food because they were hungry. So even David in the Hebrew Testament already violated that. So why would they impose it now on the disciples of Jesus? And then he continued to, to highlight two principles that are very important so that we can have a good understanding of law and the role it has in the lives of men. He said, first, that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath, which means that any law should be at the service of man any law should always promote, safeguard, and protect the welfare of man. No law should be made that it becomes the end of man. The end of man is always that he may reach his perfection, that he may be a loving person in the end. So any law that is made, any law that is promulgated, must work towards that direction of promoting the full potential of man, that man in the end may grow in love. That is the role of law. It's not the other way around. 
that man is created so that he may observe the law. That cannot be. Man was never created in order that he may be able to complete the law only. That is not the goal of our life here on earth. That we were created simply because the Lord wants us to fulfill every detail of the law? No. The law must work at the service of man and not the other way around that man is at the service of law. My dear friends, in this first principle, we realize that any law that we make, any rules that we implement, any norms that we create must really promotive of love because the perfection of man is love if man is already loving then he doesn't need any law because law must serve in order that man may learn how to completely love to fully love and if he is doing it already exercising it already then no law is ever needed in his life so when we create norms in our family when we create norms in our community, when we create rules in our society, let all this be made out of love so that man may be moved towards his perfection of loving. But secondly, it was highlighted also to us that the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath, meaning the master of all laws, is no less than God. There can never be other person superior than, than God. So God knows all of this, but more than that, God is already perfect. He is the master of the law precisely because he will never violate any law because God is love. God is already perfect. So how come he would violate any law? That is why he is the Lord even of the Sabbath. He is the Lord even of the laws because he is already the perfection of what the laws promote. If that is the case, then man should imitate such kind of perfection of God. We should imitate to become loving people as our God is a loving God. And if love is already existing, then man has reached already his perfection. Two things. Never create law that will not promote love. If norms are created, be sure they must promote love because love is the fulfillment, love is the completion, love is the perfection of man. But secondly, see to it that God is above all these laws and norms because God is already love. God is the perfection of everything. He doesn't need any law because He is already perfect. And that we must imitate. In the life of St. Anthony Abbott, he tried to imitate God. He patiently worked hard in order to imitate a loving God. Early on in his life, they were so rich, but he left everything and lived a very simple life because he wanted to be more of Christ, to be like Christ in what he was doing. And certainly, in the passing of time, little by little, he really mirrored in his life what love of God is. Many people flocked to him, Many people approached him, many people came to him precisely because they were seeing the love of God in his life. We have a model today on how to really imitate the Lord, and that is St. Anthony. He lived a very simple life and a quiet life as well, but all of this moved forwards, wanting to love the Lord and his neighbor. Let us ask the intercession of St. Anthony that that also may be that that also may that that also will be our goal in this life that we work towards perfection of life which is love amen